Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 936. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 935 to 936, click on the link below the video. Hey, in the last video, 935, we saw a formula to take a lower and upper date and get the max value from this database over here. All right, so we used maxed if if in that video, and we saw how to use aggregate, a 2010 function. We also saw some D functions, D max and D count, and then we saw D get. In this situation, we found the maximum call time between these two dates is 64, and then we use D get to look up the employee name. The problem is, D get functions are not good when you have a whole table of upper and lower criteria, and you need one formula to copy down, and if you need to extract duplicates. So in this 936, we're going to assume we already have an upper and a lower date and the max time. And over here, and I have the finished version over here, you could see sometimes we're going to have two employees with the max time, and so we need to extract both of their names. Again, duplicates uh, cause um, problems here, and also the fact that we have so many uh, sets of criteria and we want a form that we can copy, put in one cell and copy down. All right, now there's three different versions of this formula I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you all of, construct this formula from two th using 2010 functions, and then I'll scroll over and show you how those same elements can be constructed in 2007 and 2003. All right, let's see. I'm going to hide one of these columns. I'm going to right click hide. I'm going to need all of the rest of that stuff, though. So this is going to get a little. Uh, be going back and forth a lot. All right, ready? We're going to use the index function. That is a great lookup function. Well, what are we looking up? We're looking up names. So I click there, Control Shift Down Arrow F4, comma, row number. If there was just a single value, we could put just a single row number in. But no, we have multiple, potentially multiple row numbers. So we're going to have to use the small function to extract from amongst multiple row numbers. Now, we could use the small. That's what you'd have to do in 2007 and, and uh, 3. But there's a great new function in 2010 called aggregate. And sure enough, if you scroll down here, number 15 means small. So I'm going to type 15. Again, or I didn't mention it, the reason we use the aggregate is that it can handle these array calculations without using Control Shift Enter. All right, now we're going to have to use for options. We're going to have to say ignore error values, because we will have error values divide by zero errors from our array. Now array, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get row numbers. And the small inside the aggregate will extract the first smallest row number, then the second smallest, et cetera. So we need to start that array right there with all the row numbers. So I'm going to make this construction. Control, click in uh, C2, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, close parentheses. That will give me row 2, 3, 4, and I don't want that, so I'm going to do row. Actually, the, the F4. So all of the rows minus the first cell in that range, that would give me 0, 1, 2, 3. I need to add 1 back in. Now, that gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 711. I need to divide this by our criteria. Now, the thing is, we have three criteria, greater than or equal to that, less than or equal to this, and equal to 63. So I'm going to do double parentheses. The first array calculation would be the date column. Anything in that greater than or equal to this. And I'm going to need to lock this, F4. One, two, lock the column reference. So as we go this way, it's locked on the lower date. But when it copies down, it goes to the next lower date. Close parentheses times. And then I get the date column again. Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, anytime that's less than or equal to the upper date. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 to lock the column, but not the row reference. Close parentheses in our third criteria. Times open parentheses. I'm going to get my call length whenever that is equal to this one. And then lock the column, but not the row reference. All right, close parentheses close parentheses. So now this whole thing here is going to produce trues and falses only when we get true, 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 
will multiply together, we get a 1. The rest will have zeros, right? Only the row numbers that have a divide by 1 will be the ones that the aggregate small extracts. Now, comma, the k, as we go this way, since we're extracting the names horizontally, we have to use the columns function. This is great because it'll give us an incrementing number, 1, 2, 3, 4. But when it goes down to the next row, we'll start over, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, I'm sitting in J12, so I'm going to do dollar sign J12 colon J12, close parentheses. Now let's close off the aggregate. Again, the columns will give us 1, 2, 3, 4, extracting the row numbers as we copy the formula horizontally. Close parentheses, close parentheses, there's the row numbers, right? So we had that whole tricky thing aggregate right there is just to get a few row numbers. All right, so you ready? Close off the index and control enter. No need to use control shift enter. Now I'm going to copy this over and then do copy it down. Now the num arrows we'll deal with in just a moment, but you can see it's already working here. Right here it's extracting the multiple names where we encounter biggest value for that date criteria and there's more than one employee. Now in 2010 we can get rid of those num errors by using if error. If error just takes the actual thing, which in our case is a gigantic formula, that's the value, comma, value if it's an error, double quote to say show nothing. Control Enter, and I'm going to copy it over and double click and send it down. Now if I hit the F9 key, you can see we're getting our, where there's two employees for a particular date period that have the max time, we get to see both of their names. Now, how do you do that in 2007? Well, you do if error index all the same, but you got to use the small. And inside the small, you do if with your first criteria, a second if with your second criteria, a third if with your third criteria. And then the logical, the value if true is the rows, then comma, columns, and uh, that. For 2003, you're going to have to get add an extra column that counts with multiple criteria. There's a sum product function that will count with those three criteria. You can see we have a 2 here, a 1 here. And there's no if error in 2003, so you have to say if the columns are greater than this count over here, then show blank. Otherwise, that whole little thing right there is exactly like we saw over in 2007 using the small. All right, um, that's our second part. We did max if uh, for a bunch of different uh, date periods, extracting the largest value, and then seeing a formula that will extract the names even when they're duplicates. All right, see you next video.